and they don't really need a whole lot of storylines behind them. They let their gameplay talk. All right, let's see how this uh, will all come about on our map in this best of one OT mm. series. We've we've had some one-sided games today, not so much going all the way to oh. overtime, and it's Clubhouse. Fav Gaming taking Ooh. Xavier to Clubhouse. Jess, please. Huh. I, you, you're you're very vocal. I love it. Huh. Why? I don't know because. Okay, Fab beat Cloud9 on Clubhouse, but does that really say much? And then on the flip side, Xavier love Clubhouse and they've beaten Giant, Scars, Cyclops, Fnatic. I, I mean, they've beaten a lot of teams on this map, so they've showed they can have a wide array of, of success on it. Does Fab fit into that? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Nora Rengo beat Xavier on this literally a week ago. In my mind, that's a sign that Xavier definitely okay. aren't undefeatable on this, whereas you look at the recent history coming out for Fav. Having beaten both Cloud9 and Fnatic, Cloud9 more the stronger team, I'll look at it that way and say that I'm thinking I'm favouring Fav on this one, to be honest. Okay. Jess, who are you favour? I did predict Fav, I believe, just because of the recent upward swing mm -hmm. in the way that they've been playing. I think it's it's quite good. Um, and I felt a little bit of a shakiness towards Xavier, even though they've got wins. So that's, that's probably where my mind has been you know, sort of push for this matchup. All right, let's toss it over to our casters then. Geo and Dev, it's time. It's Fav versus Xavier. Enjoy. Thank you so much, Milos. And Dev, this is going to be an interesting one because Fab and Xavier currently one place apart from each other in both the overall standings and the stage two mm. standings coming to a map that has favored both of them pretty well in the past. So looking at those social votes, it looks like most people think that this is gonna be falling into Fab's hands despite the past successes that Xavier have had here. I think this one could get quite spicy. Oh, definitely. Fav are just looking so hot right now. They are on the upwards trajectory like no one else has seen before from them. It's fantastic to see. And I think that's where you see that slightly or, or quite significantly favored Fav social vote there. But Xavier, let's not forget, these guys are the giant killers. They're the ones that have put up a serious fight to giants in the past, taking several maps off them. But of course, as the guys were talking about in the pre-show, this map has been played quite a lot by both of these teams and both of them have had really good results here on Clubhouse. That said, Xavier did drop this map to Norarengo only a week ago. At the same time, Fav beat Cloud9 of all teams on this map only a week ago. So I'm definitely gonna be having a look at the results from those games and seeing what can we infer from that. First bands to come out are a Nomad and a Monty. And just having a look at the past bands that these two teams have liked to go for here, typically Xavier would go for a Thatcher and a Valkyrie. So straight up, they've changed their general tune. But Fav have banned Monty on this map before. So that's not so different to what they've done. Mira is going to be the next one to come out, though. Yeah, it's an interesting one here. The Fav um, banning out Montemira, that's that's pretty normal. That's exactly what they ban against Cloud9. Very common stuff from them. Uh, Xavier utilized both of those pretty effectively, so smart stuff. What confuses me more is Xavier's Nomad ban. And while on the surface, I would say, yeah, this kind of makes sense. They want to play aggressively. They want to go for those roams. They don't want to have to be stopped in their tracks by those air jabs when trying to make rotations. But at the same time, if you look at Fav's operator lineups last time when they played against Cloud9 on this map, which is only only a week ago and they won four out of six of their attacks well above average for clubhouse fav didn't run the nomad even once so i'm wondering here maybe that the thought is there for xavier but it seems like if they had had voted fav maybe they wouldn't have even expected fav to bring the nomad it would have probably been an adaptation from fav nonetheless xavier's just going to get it off the table whatsoever which means fav can go with that exact same lineup that they used against cloud nine all five operators, this is exactly the same. Actually, no, we've got a, a, uh, a Hibana in for the Thermite previously, but it's pretty much similar in that regard. Like, it, it, they're, they're just interchangeable hard breaches at this point for the most part. So uh, this is pretty much a going to plan for Fab, and I'm definitely favoring them in this game. Yeah, I was going to comment on how it feels like at this point, there are so many heart breaches in the game that here on Clubhouse, where you would typically see, I mean, even like a Maverick ban, one of the heart breaches be removed in the ban phase. They haven't even yeah. bothered this time because there's always going to be another option. And seeing both the Hibana and Ace coupled up together, you, you have now that doubled up opportunity to have the long range heart breach, which formerly wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't on the table. 
Yeah, we're kind of going back in time a little bit in terms of the meta with Clubhouse here. Aside from the fact that, of course, we have the Ace in as an operator you don't usually see, he's basically just a plug and play for a Thermite. And usually the meta that has developed in, in the last well, six months to a year for Clubhouse has been about wall denial, about trying to ban out the Thatcher, ban out the Maverick, be as roam, sorry, as uh, as anchor heavy as you can. And that's the opposite of, opposite of what's happening here. We have none of the hard breaches banned and Thatcher also up. And that means that the attack should have no trouble breaching things. What that means for Xavier is they're going to try and play into their loose aggression so that it doesn't get to a point where they're just staying on site and Fav has breached every single wall and hatch onto the objective. Xavier want to take these early fights so it doesn't become a game of anchors versus executors. They want to disrupt that and play a different kind of siege. Mm, well, Fav are very aware of Onagiri's position as he got droned out by Shin. And Napu did rotate down towards the red stairs, so he could be nearby to provide support should it be required. And you, you can see him in the background there on the drone, although, of course, Fav can't see that. Oh, so that, that... ADS. Go on. He's, he's got an ADS. He actually intends to sit here quite hard. Like, usually I was going to say it was a loose roam, but he kind of intending to uh, to stick around for a little while. This is very unusual kind of roam here for Xavier. Incredibly loose. You actually see Napier has also made his way back upstairs. So Xavier are ensuring that they're covering a significant amount of this map. And that's going to make it much harder for the attackers to approach. But many of them are elsewhere, one of whom is actually upstairs, it would, uh, it would appear. Oh, this is so dangerous. Onigiri, look, just the absolute balls that Xavier have to just play next to soft walls. Some people would call it stupid, but I mean, they've wasted a minute and a half. They've still got two roamers. Onigiri, he's just spraying through this wall. He backs himself in these fights and Fav's drones are dropping by the minute. Are they going to try and hard roam clear this? Because at the moment it looks like they're just going to try and push site. But Napier above with the impact onto the floor and that breach open the hatch on Kitchen is open. Napu could punish any players without their wits about them. Mm, we've seen this done before. A lot of pressure be applied onto attacking teams who tried to move in for Kitchen, or into Kitchen rather, without, well, not necessarily knowing that there's a player in Logi, but having to be aware that those holes have been opened and there could be vertical pressure. And that still remains for Xavier, or for Fav rather. Now, what? there's one player who's going to get caught out. That's Shin, and that's Napu's moment to oh, move no. downstairs, and he'll get a second. Fab getting caught out by the seconds as they continue to fall down. Now just Chloroform finds himself on his own. He's trying to play the vertical holes, but he can be shot down through the soft wall. He's going for what he can and back straight out of Freezer to some relative safety, but time is really of the essence. He'll make his way back into the building, but I don't think there's any way that he'll get downstairs in time. He may even find himself get caught out. <laughs> Napu finishing things off there for Xavier, and they secure a flawless round. Oh, look at this. Shots straight up at the roof. The hit by spray. Oh, that's such a rank thing to do. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Xavier. Uh, maybe they're sticking to their guns. They're sticking to what they know, and that is aggression. And they're not like doing an SSG roam. They're not hard using utility offsite there was just that one ads but there's no like castle it's not really a heavy info denial room no mute no mozzie just that vigil it was just a vigil and a jaeger just two fraggers solo roaming offsite and i'm i'm gonna assume here that fav kind of knew that they were roaming like fav had droned him out multiple times i think it was actually a conscious decision from fav not to address the roamers and i respect that i respect okay guys these these roamers want gunfights let's not give it to them that was fine Problem is they didn't really contain the Roma's flanks and Shin was the first one to be caught off just running through bar. Fav didn't have info on the main stairs. And well, at that point, Napier not only had been able to put pressure on Kitchen with that impact hole in the floor of Logi, but also he was able to rotate down main stairs, find Shin and bar, rotate all the way down and find the second player at bot main. So uh, overall, I think that it was a good strategy from Xavier and definitely playing into their strengths and a, a decent call from Fav to try and ignore it but I think they ignored it a little bit too much. They took that that, that interpretation of the attack a little bit too far. Mm. And this is around where we could actually see Fav reap the benefits of the Wamai ban because mm. they've decided to bring along a Capitao. And of course, if you're attacking on to CCTV and cash, the likelihood is the defenders will be holding on to Garage for dear life and dear control. If you can flush out that player, particularly with the firebolts from the Capitao, then 
that's a good control that can be taken by the attackers. Something that they, they failed to do in the last round. Uh, it's a good operator choice. Fav are a really smart team. Like, whenever you watch them, whenever I watch them, I think, wow, this is such a smart team. But sometimes they're a team that kind of tunnel visions a little bit too much. They have a cool idea, but they, they don't nail the landing. Um, they get a bit distracted, and, and we saw that last round. Um, so I'm a bit concerned here. The main thing that, that does worry me is, of course, Xavier's aggression and how it might counter what Fav are trying to do. If they're distracted, trying to flush out, like they're treating Xavier like a team that's going to play normal, a team that's going to play this static position. Red Sun's going to sit here on the rafters. They want to flush him out with the Capital. But I think it might get difficult if Xavier start jumping out. We saw a, a black eye thrown outside from the gym window. So unless if that was dealt with, Xavier should have info on anything that's happening on the southwest balcony. And they might try and get a jump out or a peek that could punish Fav. I mean, look, number two literally has a drone sitting in the server window. That hasn't that's been dealt one. with. Yeah. Xavier don't know that it's there. That's a huge question mark from me. And it means that all eyes are in this bomb site right now. As Afro pushes himself very close up to the breach to try and get some kind of pick. But he's going to retreat and back out for now as they continue to open it up. That's yeah, good. 130 and Kennels is breached. Afro, I think he was trying to bait some shots there. Very dangerous playing with fire. Red Sun and all of Xavier, incredibly talented mechanical players. And they... They really do play off that. They they play off not only the fact that they know that they're going to win their 50-50 gunfights, but also the fact that you're probably not expecting them to be playing in such an aggressive position. This is a nice position here from Scatman as well. Another example of the aggression that Xavier could be utilizing should any player move up the garage stairs. Bear in mind that Black Eye is still present in garage, which Red Sun can use without overextending or overpeaking himself. But most of the attackers are present here outside of the server wall. Is you can fire? see that Xavier has started to push up. And as you say, oh. it, there's the fire, but the crossfire makes it so hard for Red Sun to move. He's just oh. going to have to try and hold the angle onto the garage door himself self before the conflagration eats him up he misses oh, the kill no! and then he secures it and that means that the capital has been taken down and they can still hold on to garage yeah that is so pivotal there the fact that the fire didn't cover that 90 position meant that red sun wasn't forced into where he would have been exposed to the kennels breach on finds one as well this is classic fav they start to fall to pieces as soon as something doesn't go to plan there's a crossfire here nanny is getting aggressive number two's jumped straight into the bomb site and cleaned up two players only to be refragged at the end of the day it is all up to chloroform on the bomb site he'll find one and he can start this plant, but surely there's no way he can take it. Well, there's a C4 going through, and that will finish things off. He didn't have any opportunity to move off of the diffuser, as time was already run out, and it didn't take much for Xavier to deal with it. And so much of that round was just a tug of war over the garage. Xavier put in so much to consistently defend it and keep it in their grasp, and Fav couldn't quite push them out. Very much feel like the story of this game is Fav, the really smart team with the counters, but if they don't nail it perfectly, then Xavier is going to punish them. And the best example of that is that fire from Shin. I mean, you, you can't blame Shin for not wanting to peek the, uh, the garage with his firebolt, with his crossbow too avidly, because he's going up against the Valkyrie. He's going to shoot him if he leaves his head exposed for too long. So it's a really quick shot that he's got to make with that firebolt to land it in that perfect position. Now, once the kennel's breach was opened, it meant that Redson only had a couple of places in the garage where he could stay, survive, and, and not be exposed to that breach. And the two main places is anywhere behind the rafters where he's prone, because he, he's protected by the railing, and secondarily, hard in that 90 corner, right at that shelving unit. And he was allowed to escape there, and the fire did not hit that spot, meant that he could just wait until the fire had subsided. And that was the really pivotal moment. As soon as Fab didn't have control of Garage, just, you know, it hit the fan. Yeah, I think actually one of the really intriguing things to me so far is the fact that when you look at these two teams' history of playing against each other, they've played each other three times so far in APAC North. And twice of those instances have Fab won. Now you look at those maps and those are Oregon, and I believe the other one was Theme Park. Whereas when Xavier have won, it was on Coastline. 
So you look at the more methodical mm. maps and you think, okay, that's where things lean into Fab's favor. But this time round, it's not looking that way. Although Shin does get the opening kill, bringing Onigiri down. So it's a good start from Fab on this round, but it still doesn't erase what's happened in the first two. Yeah, but I do think that's a really important pick. Um... Just Fav haven't found the first gunfight in their favor either of the rounds thus far previous to this, and that suddenly changed that. Xavier like to play aggressively, and when they maintain that numbers, it really makes it much more difficult for Fav to, to play aggressively on the attacking side and overwhelm and refrag things out. So I think that's a really pivotal pick there. Um, but of course, it will come down to Fav's mid round, and of course, Napier downstairs. He has a C4 in hand. He could C4 this position where Shin's holding. He doesn't have perfect info. He's got a feeling. He doesn't know, and Shad, Shin does fall. Napu eventually gets that refrag. And crucially, he gets to keep the C4 in pocket as well. Something that could come to be very beneficial to them later on in the round. They do have Valkyrie and Bandit as well, both of whom likely carrying the same thing. Oh no, okay, Valkyrie's got a shield, but Bandit definitely has a C4. So, mm. two of those still to hand over half the round remaining. And Fav still haven't taken full control of the east side of the map yet. Something that's really crucial if you want to be hopping on the gym window and moving into the site itself. Oh, and another kill there. Afro goes down. Now he has used his EMPs to enable this breach here on the TV wall. And number two pushes in. SMG 11 in hand, ready to breach this wall, but he wants to make sure he's got some info before he does so. Oof, a bit of team damage there. Taipon, number two, stepping on each other's toes. The nade primed and ready to take out this shield. No ADS is nearby. Taipon to follow it up with a stun, and it looks like... Fav are a bit lacking on info here. They don't have a drone in lounge, otherwise they wouldn't have been sus there on the red stairs. Taipon though to drone up towards Con, and now all three of these Fav members shaping up for an execute from the seaside, but time is ticking away, only 20 seconds left. Yeah, shifting into logistics, being live droned, but Red Sun is there to get rid of the player, and now he holds control of the diffuser as well. Fav are definitely in a difficult position here, and Napier will continue to clean up. Once again, it's just chloroform, and he finds himself probably uh, feeling like he's getting flashbacks at this point for how often it's ended up this way. <laughs> Oh, this is so ridiculous. It's just so classic Xavier, isn't it? To just play unbelievably aggressively. And despite losing that player really early, it didn't phase them whatsoever. A great rotation from Napu downstairs to take down Shin on the rafters. And, uh, well, it all spiraled from that point. Fav were one player down when it came to taking cash control. And they, they did the classic Fav thing. They stalled out. Uh, once they didn't have uh, a great idea on, on where they were going to push from and they had that first player lost, it was just so much more difficult to uh, do the steps and, and kind of go everything according to plan. And that's something that we fa uh, fa just surely know about themselves as a bit of a weakness. And it's one that Xavier is definitely capitalizing upon. Now, I definitely think there's a way to kind of come back from this. I think the main thing is just being more aware of their flanks. Like how many of these kills that Xavier have at the moment have been players where... Fav, if they had a drone in that position, they would have known. Um, and Fav are historically really good with their drone economy. They're not losing many in the prep phase, and they're not losing that many at the start of the action phase either. But I think potentially that's because they're being quite timid with their drones, and that means they're not getting into good positions for flank watch. And playing against the Mozzie certainly isn't going to help their chances of keeping the drone economy healthy. And this is where we look back and we think, ah, oh, that's that's where the Nomad ban came in. Xavier knew, man. They yeah. knew. <laughs> uh, they could see. Yeah, I mean, it, it totally is just characteristic of Xavier's playstyle. But I, I do wonder, I mean, obviously, if, uh, if Fav had the Nomad available, they might have just picked it for the sake of it. At this point, maybe, like, losing three rounds to Flanks, you're like, all right, let's just pick the Nomad. But, uh, no, it, I'm, I, I feel like they would have potentially just stuck their normal team cop anyway, as they do on Clubhouse. But who knows? It's difficult to predict. It's not a possibility any longer. And we see Xavier once again going for a loose roam. Bit of drone denial this time, something they didn't have previously. 
And by the looks of it, Fav are much more keen to roam clear. I think that's the right decision here. Um, at least even if they don't fully roam clear the top floor, where I believe we've got one or two roamers sitting currently. Uh, Onigiri and Napier actually on the ground floor at the moment, and Red Sun potentially to support. I don't mind here if Fav don't fully clear these guys out, but they just need to be really aware of their flanks. Like, have drones and players watching, because if you're holding the angle at the right time, Xavier are going to give you a free kill. I mean, Shin's going to have to get these kills, really, if Fav have any hope of taking control of Blue, because Xavier is so stringently positioned to prevent that from happening. And what we saw last time was, yes, some players from Fav made it down the main stairs, but they just got completely flanked by Napew and were taken down. And really, you have no hope of having a successful church wall breach slash push if you don't have control of the other side of the map as well. So that's definitely going to turn out to be a problem if Fav aren't thorough and Napew's all the way back upstairs and could potentially get a flank off once again. You can see how cautious Fav are being with their drones on the flank watch, particularly for that lobby side through lounge. But are they worried about main stairs as well at the moment? Not really. Also having five players up typically means you don't have anyone on drones. We noticed that right now, but Fav, three people down the main stairs. That goo mine will slow this down. My concern here is there's no one watching flank watch at the moment. Napew is ready on the main stairs. Surely someone catches him off guard. Fav, you can't let him get away with this again. If he gets these kills, I am going to go absolutely mental. He's playing it patient for now as the three players are farther down here, but no one is watching upstairs. No. Shin's looking like he's going to head back on up, oh, but this could no. be free real estate for Napew. He starts it off. He gets all three of the players. We've seen this one before, and Fav are going to be feeling that pain. And guess who's left? That's right, it's Chloroform. Xavier looking absolutely dominant to the extent of hilarity on that round. Uh, images that preceded unfortunate R6 events. There's a freebie it's, it's for you. It's gonna be that. that <laughs> it's the way that he waited for a millisecond as well. Oh my God. He was just like, ah, uh -huh, I have them now. <laughs> Oh, it's like watching a car crash in slow motion. Honestly, I love Fab. Oh, no. I think I just have so much respect for their team. They're usually so smart, but they tunnel vision so hard. And Xavier are absolutely capitalizing on on it. Like not to take anything away from the tie, they know what they can get away with. And every time Xavier gets away with it, it just reinforces that in them. I mean, Xavier, they identified that Fav's droning was really good. And they thought, hey, why don't we bring the mozzie instead of the vigil? It'll slow them down. But once again, there was no hard flank watch. Hell, at this point, bring a gridlock. It would be better than just not watching at all. Like five players alive. People really underestimate flank watch. If you have five attackers alive, it typically means you don't have anyone sitting on drones flicking, watching for those flanks. When you have five players, when, as soon as someone's dead, right, they're definitely going to be watching your flanks on the cameras, right? But once five is alive, that's when it's super dangerous now. The pivotal thing is either A, you have to have someone who's alive, sitting somewhere safe, watching the drones so that crap like this can't happen. Or secondarily, you need someone just hard watching the flanks with their guns so they can punish. I guarantee you, if Fab was doing that right now, they would be getting three kills onto Xavier. Mm, and that was the thing that I called out as well. You know, I said there's not a single one of them who's looking up the stairs. They're all face down towards the church wall. It's just completely free for Napier to take advantage of. And this could end up being a pattern that continues as currently he's sat on 12 and oh. <laughs> you haven't we died yet. Are four rounds in. <laughs> like, what? Absolutely disgusting. He has no right. And if he catches someone out on some kind of run out now, I'm just, I'm going to be oh, no. so done. Fava going for something different as well. They are opening up the garage, and this could be where Napew can catch out one of the players. He's trying to be careful so he doesn't get detected. We can't currently see anyone. But this time, Fav haven't brought the cap. So their ability to flush out whomever may be on the garage rafters could be hampered. No cap. Oh, Shin, thank you very much. Takes down <laughs> Napew. And that's the first death for him in the game. He'll have to sit out on cameras. Uh, I don't even know. Maybe he just goes and all tabs into an aim trainer at this point. Afro to find, ooh, helping to enable this breach, watching through the holes. It's difficult, takes a bit of damage for it. 
Once again, Shin finds that opening pick. It's the same thing that happened when they attacked Jin Bedroom, but they couldn't convert it. They don't have the Capital here to flush out Red Sun, so I do wonder what is the strategy? How are they going to flush out Red Sun? All the while, they're struggling to get this Kennel's Breach open. How much Hard Breach just left? Because I think that Ace was just impact tricked. Yeah, and already Afro as well, he's played the Martyr game, taking a significant amount of damage by standing straight in front of it. He's going to be weakened. Shin trying to hold on to the angle into Garage to prevent Red Sun from getting aggressive, but eventually you've got to peek in if you want to be using that Breach Charge on any of the utility that may be inside. Burning out the ADS and Red Sun gets a tiny bit flash, but not enough to significantly hinder him, and he still retains the control in this part of the map. Yeah, he's protected somewhat from that single reinforced panel. Utility expended to clear the barbed wire and Malusi Banshee on that main wall. And that does allow Fab to push up the stairs, but if you recall last time there was a Roma downstairs, fortunately number two from the kennel's wall punishes Red Sun, who moves just a little bit too much on the rafters. Now a five versus three. This is the best position we've seen Fav in all game, but 20 seconds and Xavier are still prone like rats. They've got to execute. Well, DCH gets a kill and Scatman's ready with the shotgun. He gets the first one. Can he get a second? He cannot. Fav open up the wall even further, but just seven seconds remain. The kill's oh, coming no. for them. Onagiri, he is the last remaining member of Xavier. <gasps> no. But they go for the res. And they run out of time. Xavier continue with their dominance, even though Fav had such an advantage in that round. A five versus three, but time got the better of Fav in the end. And while you could say, well, I'm sure that there are some people spamming the chat right now. What? Why would he go for the res? Well, he had a goo mine in his pocket. He literally couldn't plant if he wanted to. So um, honestly, as soon as that goo mine hit him, as really as soon as it was a 1v3, that round was over. I'm uh, sorry, 1v1. Um, as soon as the two, Shin's two teammates were downed. Because it, it's kind of complicated here, but Shin walks into a goo mine. Uh, he picks up the diffuser off his injured teammate. Shin can't plant because he has the goo mine in his foot. He's got to tear that out first. There's no time. Uh, even if he revived his teammate, he can't give his teammate the diffuser because he's in the bomb site. So he would just end up trying to pull out the goo mine if he tried to drop the diffuser. So basically, the only option there for, fit, for Shin was to go for kills. And of course, Onigiri wasn't going to let that happen. So um, unfortunate there, but the round was very much won in uh, the run out from Onigiri that I assume got the injure onto that player who was to plant the Thatcher. And that was really the uh, the pivotal moment there for Xavier. And on top of that, I just think it's crazy how, like, Fav, they do everything right. They establish themselves in a 5v3. They've got garage control. But because time is so low, and Xavier, they don't take the predictable positions. Yes, there was one guy in cash, and he got shut down. Like, the only player from Xavier who was in a predictable position when the execute came through was the one who died. It was the players, like, the one who was prone at the kennel's breach who actually had a positive impact. And that just says a lot, I think, about Xavier's playstyle. James, you know, I'm having flashbacks back to stage one where APAC was the overtime region. And today we've had two seven, <laughs> seven ones. Uh, this could end up being a third. It could be a 7-0. Oh. Fab, of yeah. course, will have the opportunity to defend once the, rat, the, the halves switch. But Xavier looking incredibly strong here. Even if Fab take this round, Still in a disadvantageous position because on Clubhouse, you would hope for at least a 4-2 as the attackers. They don't have that option anymore. I feel like 4-2 as defenders is kind of more... Oh, you mean 4-2 against them? Like 2-4? Yes. For attack. Yeah, right. I was yes. In that, we are in agreement. Um, but funnily enough, I was going to say, Fav actually, last time they played this map against Cloud9, a really, really strong team, Fav went 4-2 on their attack. So they're actually really good at attacking here on Clubhouse. That said, obviously they can't do that anymore. And funnily enough, it was Fav who won the coin flip. Fav got to choose which side they started on. They backed themselves on their attack, and I don't blame them after how well they played against C9. And they chose to start on attack, but I think now it is absolutely gutting them. 
Xavier up five on their defense. Like, yes, Fab are pretty comfortable on their attack, but Xavier are just in another level on their defense. And it means that when eventually Xavier do get to their attack, like, I don't expect, even if this goes 06 here for Fab, I don't expect Xavier to run away on win their first attack. Maybe I'll be wrong. But I think that it just, it's going to give them such a buffer and such a confidence boost that Xavier will be in such a good position to take this game. I mean, look, this is just another instance where you have DCH able to flank back to the main stairs, but Napu's still playing underneath. He'll have a C4 in hand and knows that these players are above oh. him now that they've moved in. No. He does get the first kill onto Shin. He'll still have the opportunity to get more, but he misses with the C4. Not entirely sure about the information he had there. And he backs out. But still, that first opening kill, it's become something of a pattern. Oh! Oh! Red Sun on this cheeky little boost. My goodness. And oh, eventually shut down. But Fab once again fighting from behind. Xavier re-peaks everything. A 4v2 now. And the defenders surely have no chance of losing this. Napier is going to do what he does best. And he's going to go for the flank. Is there even a drone watching this? Absolutely not. See you later. All on Chloroform on the balcony. They know where he is. Surely Xavier are just going to keep on peeking him. They're not going to let this run out of time. Ooh. At least he can find a consolation frag. But no chance he's getting that. And Xavier, a flawless 6-0 defensive half on Clubhouse. At what point does Chloroform lose his cool? <laughs> Like, he is always the last guy standing. <laughs> it's like, he must at this uh. point feel like how Milos feels about us when we're all just like the rowdy kids and he's got to be a dad. <laughs> That's probably how Chloroform feels. And you know the other thing about that round as well? They lost the diffuser in the exact same spot that they did the previous time they attacked onto that site. It was always coming in through logistics. Except the first time they did it, they were being live droned and it just so happened that the player who was carrying it got killed by the Valkyrie who was in logistics. This time, the refrags were there. Xavier were ready to jump in to avenge their fallen teammates. And once again, you find yourself in the same position. I don't usually like to assume, but I'm going to hazard a guess that a lot of these flanks and plays that Xavier's are going for is based on info from the Valkyrie. They brought it all but one round. Um, and I do wonder maybe where if for Fav, like maybe even the Valkyrie would have been a more effective ban than the Mirror. I mean, yes, the Mirror would have given Xavier more anchor potential, but when Mirror is on the table, when you're playing against the Mirror, it's it's predictable, right? You know that, that that is the Mirror. There's someone on the other side of it looking at me. That is one player you can account for. At least you usually typically can assume that. But Xavier are playing loose. That's what they're doing well. It's not necessarily the anchors. In fact, it's basically never the anchors or the people who are in typical positions that Fav are struggling to deal with. It's always those roamers, always those X Factors, and um, Fav have just, you know, had their backside absolutely handed to them now on their attack, which they're so good at here on Clubhouse. So I'm really concerned how this defense half will go for them. They don't have very many chances to make it go for them. This could end up being a defense seventh. Mm. Because we're on match point. There aren't more chances. And Fav, who have been looking so dominant in stage two, particularly currently the best Japanese team in the region. This is not them. This is not the them that we know. But what we do know is aggression from Xavier and Napu all the way, already oh, at the bottom of main stairs without being caught out. This is just, you can't do that. That's illegal. <laughs> well, at least he hasn't got anything for it yet. He's going to help drone himself up. He, he has a feeling that there's a Valk camera. That's what he was looking for just then. Because that player sprayed him to the wall. Oh, he spots that too. He can call out to his teammates that they're going to try and impact trick this hatch. Actually, two players now trying to impact trick. What an angle. We've seen players die to this in the past, but the x is to detonate on the hatch. It will not blow. That impact trick works out just fine. And Afro is still trying to peek this. Is there another impact to try and counter it? There is. And DCH is all out of x -Kairos. No kitchen hatch for you. Now well, they've just got to rely on the ace, but you can't waste everything on the kitchen hatch. Eventually you have to move on. They'll likely want to use that on either the bar hatch or the church wall. There's a, an attempt at, I, I guess, a C4. 
Oh, I think that was the breaching charge. That was the. Naked. It was he a breaching one. There we go. Yeah, he's he's trying. So this is typically the step oh, you do before Coraform's you try and breach the hatch. Cor Coraform's not carrying a C4. My bad. He's uh, brought proximity alarm, which I guess well, you're gonna need because Xavier idea. can just yeah. move around. <laughs> yeah, you need to know where they're gonna be. Yeah. What's funny here is, um, despite all the hard breaches being on the table and Thatcher, um. Xavier is struggling to, to breach, and well, I guess it doesn't matter if they can find the opening pick. That's Shin going down, Scatman, and I think this is going to be a main stairs centric push. There's no hard breach, so they're going to have to funnel. That's one thing the Fav weren't able to do. There's a kill onto Napu. That's really huge for Fav because of how much Napu's been doing, but Xavier, you know, it's even now as far as man count goes, and they've we have no reason to believe that they won't be able to take this fight at this point. 20 seconds to go oh, no. and Chloroform will be the next to be eliminated. Scatman's just got to go straight in with the plant. And now Fab have got to rush through to try and help this. 10 seconds and there's the plant done. A post-plant situation. Number two gets a pistol kill onto Onigiri, but he takes a hefty amount of damage in the process as well. Scatman, Red Sun, they both get kills and it's all down to Afro. He has barely any HP, just trying to peek in through the door. He can't be too overzealous, but he can't get anything. A 7-0 for Xavier on a map that we thought could, in theory, go either way. They show just how much they can be. Revenge is best served cold, and Xavier certainly get their just rewards over Fav after an incredible 8-7 loss from Xavier last time these teams encountered on Playday 2. Xavier certainly came back with fire. Napu playing unbelievably. I can't wait to see the CCG rating for that one because when you go plus 11 in a seven round game, that is just absolutely atrocious. And on the flip side, sadly, another 7-0 against Fav. But it seems that Thai teams are their bane. It was Q confirm who 7 0 them on Villa in stage one. And Xavier have carved them up here as well. Absolute ephemera of a round. It's just over so quickly. We barely got a chance to see what it was, but what we did see was some absolutely fantastic play from Xavier particularly. But let's send this on over to the analysts so they can break it down further. Thank you so, so much, guys. Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, man, this is a rough one.